In the early 2000s, serial entrepreneur Steve Blank began developing a customer-focused theory of startup strategy that later became known as Lean Startup. More than a decade later, this paper is one of the first to empirically test the method. We used to have people come in and tell, quote, war stories about how I was a successful CEO and here was my great adventure in my startup. And I could tell you great war stories as well and lots of fun and whatever. But what I was looking for is something that, that a practitioner could say, oh, I, I get the story, but here's what I'm supposed to do. Developed amid the dot-com crash and the 2008 financial meltdown, Lean Startup attracted the attention of founders and venture capitalists looking for a more efficient way to build companies. Blank encouraged would-be innovators to engage in customer discovery, getting out of the building to test their hypotheses about their solution with actual customers. If their hypotheses don't pan out, they can pivot to a new approach instead of fully developing a product only to watch it fail in the market. In times of crisis, people tend to look for new ideas and new things. And Lean was just that opportunity to say, hey, if you use this methodology rather than throwing random darts at the wall, here's a way we believe to kind of optimize, uh, uh, optimize the path. It's really one of the most widely used methods for creativity and innovation today. So whether you have an idea for a startup or, or you work in a big established corporation and you want to shake up things there, chances are that you will have or you have already used the Lean Startup Method. To study the Lean Startup Method, Rita Katila and Michael Leatherby turned to i a National Science Foundation program that aims to help scientists and engineers turn their research into marketable technologies. In our research paper, we, anal- we were able to analyze 152 teams over an 82, I mean, uh, over an eight week period. And every week, teams make decisions about their business ideas as they interview roughly uh, 10 stakeholders on a weekly basis. We also sent a survey to these teams after the training in six, 12, 18 month intervals, trying to figure out how did the training impact uh, the team's success? By making explicit your hypotheses about your business idea and going out to gather information about the validity of your hypotheses, you learn and thus reduce the uncertainty about your idea. You have to have these explicit hypotheses in mind because when you have hypotheses in mind, you are going to be revisiting the original cause and effect relationship when you get those results. Learning by thinking is the staple of MBA programs, especially those programs that rely on case studies. Uh, And these encourage the creation of analogies, for example, that you could potentially use in in your organization. You learn a framework and then you apply it. So that's sort of ingrained in MBA business school thinking. And here, in contrast, we have this method that's very learning by doing, exactly the opposite. And uh, the MBAs don't necessarily embrace the method, it, it's, it, it is not in their training, but if we get MBAs to engage with the method, they are actually in a better position to use it because they do have those learning by thinking skills so they can better interpret the data. When you go out and talk to people, that actually inspires teams or entrepreneurs to think about new business ideas not originally considered, okay? Now, now this is important because it does not necessarily mean that you do what customers are asking you to do. Instead, you get to learn more about the needs and habits of potential customers, and you become inspired to think about new ideas not originally considered. Now, now this is different than, than just pivoting because somebody told you, no, this is the wrong idea, you need to go this way. This is about becoming inspired and thinking, you know, more more deeply about the opportunity landscape. So if you're teaching a lean startup in your master's or MBA class, there's an opportunity to use the, the research and our findings to explain why are we actually using this method in class? Why are we crafting hypotheses? Why is it that we had to leave the building? You know, I remind all my students that this isn't the method, it's a method. And, and you know, it was just made up by, you know, a bunch of people and, and whatever. But I've been surprised about how well it seems to fit the nature of innovation and entrepreneurship. 
and I had expected it to be replaced by something radically different by now. Um, and it's starting to dawn on me that uh, that this tool set might have been more revolutionary than I expected. To find other resources on Lean Startup, including lectures by Steve Blank, Eric Reese, and Alexander Osterwalder, visit Stanford eCorner. Stanford eCorner is produced by the Stanford Technology Ventures Program in Stanford's Department of Management Science and Engineering.